now. We greet you on this, the first Sunday of September, on this Holy Communion Sunday. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, God, and we thank you that we could be gathered in your house and we could be gathered in this fashion online to worship, to praise, to honor, and to glorify your holy name. Father, on this the first Sunday of September, as we gather around the table, as we come to break bread and drink of your shed blood, Father, we just pray that it will bring a new revelation to us this morning, mighty God. Those that are sick in body, those that need a miracle, those that need restoration, my God, I pray that as they partake of this Holy Communion, Father, that there will be a change in their lives. Lord, we thank you as well, Lord, uh, for what you are doing and in each and everyone's lives here this morning, my God. We thank you, Father, that there is going to be a new thing that's going to come forth this month as we gather to pray and to to just to seek after you this first Sunday of the month, Lord God, as we put you first, God, in everything we know, everything else, we follow mighty God, and we thank you, Lord, that it is a privilege, Lord, and an honor, Lord, to worship and to praise your holy name. Father, I pray for the word that will come forth this morning. I pray that the word will be a timely word, a word in season, mighty God, a word that will bring some hope and restoration to those that need it this morning, mighty God. And Father, I pray for Worship and further continue. Bless us, Lord, right now in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give Jesus a hand? Can we pray?
worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
The name of the Lord is to be praised. The name of the Lord is to be praised. And we raise up our voices, O oh God, and we say, Praise be to our God. Father, we pray today that you will bless us. Even though, oh God, this morning we sense your presence here so strong once again. Lord, it is something we never take for granted. Is your presence, O oh Lord. Oh, holy presence, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning service. And for those of you that are online, we want to just give you a little bit of a heads up as to what's taking place today. Here in the building, we have a few guests with us. And uh, the other day, Portia and I were talking, and we thought that it was good to give all our senior folk a chance to just come into the building. We were closed for a long time with the 50, but you know, when we were in 100, we were in the building. But now that we are, well, 50, we said, let's do something. Because we're coming into the month of September, and it's also a change of season. I also felt very much in my spirit that we need to start praying more strategically and intentionally for where God is going to take us. And you have to understand, and those of you sitting here in the building, we need your wisdom. We need your experience. We need all the years of knowledge that God has given you through your lifetime, we need that to be downloaded and given to the generations that are we are currently facing. And so today, I want to welcome every one of you that are online. If you are here and if you are watching for the first time, if this is your first time to be here with us at the Family Church Online, Portia and I welcome you. Our team here at the church welcome you. I can tell you something that I'm just feeling something in my spirit, that there is something that's going to take place. And if you are not expectant, if you are not expectant as a child of God, nothing will come to you. There has got to be an expectancy for something to take place. You can either exist or you can live in purpose. People who live in purpose have an expectancy. Because when there is an expectancy, it is like a seed that has been planted. And from that seed, it's going to germinate. And there is going to be a birthing forth of something that is going to take place. And so every one of you today, be expectant. Have a deeper hunger. Not just a hunger, but have a deeper hunger and a deeper thirst. For the things of God. And this morning we are going to now go into the Holy Communion as we are about to partake. And I trust that you are all ready. And you have your Holy Communion prepared. And I'm going to read for you today from the book of John chapter 6. And this is the words of Jesus. And he's talking about Jesus, the bread of life. Verse 25 says, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and he says, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me. Not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill. And then he goes on to say, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. 
Are you ready today and everyone that is online that is watching and everybody that's in the building here today? You have got to know that we as children of God are in a perfect plan that God has assigned for every one of us. And this plan involves your salvation and my salvation, which is very, very important. Verse 28 says, Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works that God requires? And Jesus told them, The work of God is this, to believe in the one that he has sent. That means you and I have to believe in the one that God has sent. And who is the one that God has sent? And that's his son, Jesus Christ. And so they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it was written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And many times we see, and we liken it to the current generation, where many of us talk about what used to happen. Many of us talk about the things that transpired, the things we've experienced, and we get stuck there not knowing that God has something brand new for every one of us. And listen to what Jesus replies. He said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And here is your blessing today. Verse number 20, 35, Jesus declares, He says, I am that bread of life. He says, I am the bread of life. And whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now I know that there were seasons in my life when I was hungry. And I wanted food. And there was no food. It was a time of fasting. It season of when I was we were going through fasting and you know when, when you go through a fast you need food you, but uh, you, as, to sustain yourself but when you go through a fast you are fizzy you are putting your body through a discipline so my body is saying to me I need the food and I came to the understanding at that time that as much as I need the food I'm not going to die if I don't have that food but beyond that food, that earthly uh, natural food, was a spiritual food. And I can tell you, as I grow and as I'm growing, the more I read the word and I get closer to God, the more I'm being fulfilled and my hunger, my thirst is starting to be, is starting to be quenched. I'm starting to receive that which I'm hungry and thirsty for. And so it starts with us as individuals that we have to hunger for God. You can be hungry in the natural. You can be hungry in the spiritual. You can have your fill in the natural. But if you don't hunger in the spiritual, you can have all the food in the natural. It will never satisfy and bring you to a place of what the Bible calls fulfillment. Because only in Jesus Christ can you and I get fulfillment. And here as we have entered into a new month. Verse number 36. Jesus says, but I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. And all those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. And that is you today. Every one of us that are here today. Every one of us that are online. When we come to Jesus, He never drives us away. And you got to have that assurance. It's, it is such a blessing. It is such an assurance to know that Jesus will never drive us away. 
And he says, for I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And he's talking about his father God. And he says, and this is the will of him who sent me. What is this will? And here is our blessing today. That I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. And that is every one of us that are here. None of us are going to be lost to the kingdom. And that is the faith we have. And that is the faith you must have today. That you are part of a bigger plan. You are part of a plan. And some of you may not even realize it or don't even know it. Because you are young and you are going through a season. And in the season you're finding yourself. It was like the winter we've just come out of. And you are thinking, where is God? The winter is part of the process of where God is taking you through. And verse number 40 he says, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. Say Amen this morning. Every one of you that are online, say Amen. While your heads are bowed and your eyes remain closed, here at the church and also those of you online, we've learned that Jesus is the bread of life and many of us hunger because we do not know. Many of us are not filled because we have not learned who this Jesus is. Come to the realization of surrendering our lives fully to him. And our contentment today as children of God comes from knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. None of us will be lost. And that's the good news today. And another good news is that we will all have what the Bible calls eternal life. And you will be raised up in life and also you will be raised up in death. And therefore you need not have any, any worry whatsoever when you are in the will of God the Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is broken for you And he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And today as we are about to partake of the Holy Communion, as we are about to partake, I ask you with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. <coughs> Let's partake now of the broken body as we do this in remembrance of of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can take your seats. Thank you, everybody. Let's have the lights on. And I think we're going to go into the word in a few moments from now. But let me at this time just call Portia to help me. And we're going to talk about the announcements and a few uh, programs that are coming up. And so let's listen to what's in store. By the way, I did not wear any flowers today, but Portia wore the flowers for me, so she's covering up for me. She's going to talk to you about some programs, listen up, because there's some good news. Those of you that are here and also online, there's going to be some great programs coming up, and they, I can tell you, God is going to do extraordinary things. Good morning, everyone. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house today to all you lovely people here? What a freedom of worship. And we can't wait for everyone who's online to also join us. So good morning to everyone online as well. Um, I've just got a few announcements for you today. Some good news. We are opening Tuesday night services starting from this week. Yes, it's time to start gathering. And even though our numbers are small, we believe that we have to start. Mm -hmm. So Tuesdays, we are having service. And for this particular week, we'd like you to just register via uh, the church WhatsApp number. Just send, in, uh, send us your names. And um, if you could do that as soon as possible, because obviously there is going to be a limited number. We are starting a new pro... Um, um, well, sorry. We are starting um, pre-marriage classes for those who are going to be getting married over the next few months. Um, the first class is going to be on Wednesday, the 8th of September, which is this coming week. We have already contacted those couples who we are aware, obviously, that they are getting married very soon. But if you are um, going to be getting married soon and would love, like to attend this class, maybe contact our church office. The number will come up on the screen right now, and we can try and help you in to coming into this class. We will be having this class, though, on a regular basis from the new year onwards. This is going to be a brand new program that our church is going to be starting, and it's called Grief Share. Some of you may have heard of this uh, program being been done at other churches. It's for those who have suffered the loss of a loved one. It's been uh, something that's been on pastor in my heart for a while now, and we finally have been able to take it off, and it will be starting on the 22nd of September. So for more information on this, because there is some details that you do need to be aware of, of uh, we'd like you to please contact the church, also again on the WhatsApp number, and mm. we will give you further details so for those of you who would love to be part of a class where you, we could um, speak the word of God into your life and help you heal during mm. this very difficult mm. season that you may have been through, please join us on this journey. The family man. Okay. So for the rest of the year, there are two, two family man sessions that are going to be taking place. For this particular sessions it's focused on the married and so the theme for these two sessions is my marriage and me there's a part one and there's a part two and so we want to encourage all of you who are married to please register 
The first one is going to be taking place on the 15th of October. We're telling you all these dates, it's quite a few dates. <laughs> you may have to play this back. But the first one is on the 15th of October and thereafter there'll be another one like about a month later. But please diarize this in your calendar. If you are married, it's, at, it's going to be at seven o'clock. And then lastly, we have a new program that's going to be run for, do, for the younger generation, okay? So if you are between the, year, the years of 18 and 35, Pastor would like to take you on this program where he is going to, it's called Groom for Life, and I think the name speaks for itself. And so this is going to be an ongoing program as well, but for the first class, it is going to be held on the 27th of Oct October, and once again, please contact the church number for further details. So I know I've said quite a lot, and I hope you've been able to take all that in. But it's going to be a busy end to the year, and there's also so much more coming in the, in the next year as well. So look out for that. This is just a high level of what's going to be taking place in the next few months. God bless you all, and um, can't wait to see you all online, and I wish you everything of the best. The mic, is it? All right. Thank you. Now, you heard all of that. That was quite a bit of information that you've heard there, but don't stress. We are going to be putting that up on social media. Uh, Tuesday nights are now open. Pre-marriage classes, grief share, the family man, that's called my marriage and me. That's the topic. And then groomed for life, aimed at all the younger generation to get the people to where they should be. Should I tell them the two words about? Not yet. Is that too much? Hey, too much information. Okay, Portia says, don't tell you the two words, so maybe she knows better. Younger people, get ready. Because you are, when you come for this class, groom for life, don't think you're coming to get motivated. You're going to have to come in with a strong back. Because you're going to get trained the proper way to go and deal with life on the outside. Nothing comes easy. Easy come. Easy go. We're not training weak people. We want to train strong people for the future generations. For the things that we are seeing take place in the world. The way the devil is coming with his schemes and devices. If you are weak, you're going to be in trouble. So this morning we are going to go into a time of uh, giving. And I want to take you to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 10 and 11. The Bible says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Now right there, you have got to understand that God, like the Bible says, now he who supplies seed to the sower. So that means if you're a sower, God is giving you seed. If you're not a sower, you're not going to get a supply of seed. So if you want to have a supply of seed, you've got to become a sower. What is a sower? And I know many people, not only here in the family church, but through the years that I've been uh, growing and learning and meeting people, there are so many people out there that have just got such a big, big heart. And when you look at these people, they are short of absolutely nothing. They may have a need here or a need there, a spiritual need, but overall, they are not in need of any material things. And that's because, and let me explain, they have what we call a generous spirit. And that is where we need to come to as children of God. And that is that we have to be generous in what we do. In our daily walk, 
in whatever we do outside, we must not have a selfish attitude where it's only to hoard and to keep and to just store and not to be a blessing to somebody out there. And in saying that, you don't have to go and be a blessing only to get the light shining on you. You need to do things in secret and God will reward you according to what he says in his word that he will reward you publicly or openly as some translations say. But it's interesting that in 1 Corinthians we learn that, that seed goes to the sower. The supply of seed goes to the sower. So if you're not a sower... You've got to go and look back and see where are you going wrong. You have to have a generous heart. Generous heart talks about also in church, you sow your offerings, your tithes go to God. That's one thing. That's a huge factor. Many people are being tested in this area. But also, if you're not faithful in small, it's hard to be faithful in big things. If you cannot learn to be faithful in the small things, I can tell you God is not going to bring the bigger things into your life. Because that's the way God works. God wants to test your faithfulness to Him that you can do what He asked you to do in small things. That is why we were talking about a word called consistency. You, we have to be consistent with God for God to be consistent with us. Many people find themselves in highs and lows of life. And they say, but one day I'm up and the next day I'm down. You've got to go and look back and see how consistent are you in what you do. I know, and there's a gentleman that I met a while back when I went to visit him. He took me into his prayer room and into one of his cupboards he opened. He took out a little book. It was no bigger than this handkerchief. And he showed me that book and he said, Pastor, I want you to show you something. He says, this book has got all my tithes from many years ago. I write down the date and I write down the amount. The, uh, the, month, the, the amount. And I said, so why do you do that? He says, I do that to remind God. When I'm in need sometimes, I go to this book and I take it out and I say, God, this is a reminder to you for what you asked me to do and I'm doing it. And God has opened up the floodgates for him. You see, consistency is what God wants. God doesn't want a one week relationship or a one night relationship where today I'm all holy, I'm righteous, I'm living for him. Next week I'm in the world. Then the following week I'm living holy for him. The next week thereafter I'm back in my sin. Then after that I come and have an encounter, I'm with him. And then the following month I'm back in the sin. God does not want that. He wants consistency with us. And when he gets consistency with us, it shows God that he can trust us. That is why he can then supply seed because he calls you and I a sower. So if he's supplying seed and if you're not sowing, then the latter part of uh, verse uh, Corinthians 9-11, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. During the time of the Holy Communion service, many people bring in their tithes. And it is a very sacred time. And we do not take our tithes for granted. When we give God his the tithe that belongs to him, we pray. We pray and we say, God, this belongs to you. And I said to you and I warned you and for those of you that are tech savvy and you just go and you hit the button as though you're paying any other bill. Don't treat the tithe like you pray any other bill. If you're doing it online and you just go and you click, click and you say, right, that's done. You tick the box and you move on. If you do not pray, if you do not thank God for that which is given, because that is holy that you've given back to Him. It's holy. It's like the testimony that we had when we opened the church. When Portia and I were going through a time of waiting on God. And we say, God, show us a sign that you want us to take the step of faith and plant a church. And God gave us both the green light. But you know how many times... When God gives us the green light, we also want to see something 
tangible. And I'll never forget the day when I got the call from a person and the person says, Pastor, this is what we want to do for you. We don't know, but God is leading us to do this for you. And when they told me what they want to do and what value it was, I was, man, I took a step back. Immediately I said, please hold on to that seed. For I knew that that seed was holy seed. And I said, wait until we come back to you. Because I knew we were in a time of waiting. And when you're in a time of waiting, you cannot rush. You cannot become emotional. You cannot make decisions that you're going to regret later. You've got to know that it's God. And God gave us the confirmation. And because it was holy seed, I knew that I could not get that money into my account or any account until... God opens that bank account for the church, which was done in his time. And then I picked up the phone and I said, sir, it's now done. Everything is public. God has moved. You can put that money into the church. Why? Because we have to be accountable for that. And that is holy seed. Just like that is your tithe. When you click that button and pay and give God our tithes, it is a time we're, and I'm looking at Portia, by the way, because she does it for us. She does the, all the, the uh, electronic payments. So it is a time where we pause and we say, God, this is holy. Don't treat the tide appositely. It is holy in God's eyes. And as you treat it, so too will you see the fruit. You treat it holy, you're going to see God step in. And your tithe is for your financial protection. You may not see breakthrough and a harvest immediately. But I can guarantee you God is working in you. And you're going to learn in the word in a few minutes from now. How God is going to give you the fresh start that you need. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Father we thank you today for the seed. Thank you for the tithe that we can give back to you. In the tithe and in the earnings and all that we earn. Thank you that we can give you what's due to you. Thank you that the 10% we bring and we put it back into your kingdom. We do that God because your word says in Malachi. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here with say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to contain. So, Father, we pray that as we sow our tide and our offering today, thank you, God, that you are going to do according to your word and pour out a blessing so much so that we will not have room enough to contain. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let us stand, everybody, as we worship.
thank you today that as we prepare our hearts to listen to your divine holy word we know God that every time we listen to your holy word it is good good seed that falls into good good ground and as it has produced all our lives we know that it is still going to produce even as we receive more good seed and i pray prophetically today on this the first sunday in the month of september 2021 in this pandemic i pray god that the seed is going to produce after its own kind as I come against every attack of Satan over the body of Christ. I break every power of darkness over the body of Christ. I break every evil agenda over the body of Christ. And I confuse the strategy of the evil one. And I know that great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so every one of you that is online today, get ready! Woo! For there is going to be a fresh start. There is going to be a whole new start. And those that are hungry,
Jesus, you so good, so good to us. Bless thy word now unto our hearts that we may glorify your name in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen, and amen. You may take your seats. You can have a fresh start. Any time you please. Any time you please. If you want to sit and you want to just be lazy and say you're going to do it next year or next month, you can have a fresh start next year or next month. But the only thing you are wasting is time. If you want to know the value of time, go and speak to an individual who is on their deathbed. Go and speak to a person who is in their senior years. They will tell you about the value of time. But you can have a fresh start any time you please. You see, because this thing that we call failure... You see, society uses a word called failure. This thing we call failure is not the falling down, but it's the staying down. And many of you have fallen, and you succumb to that word failure, and you're staying down. If you stay down, then the devil has all the right to call you a failure. But if you know that you can have a fresh start and you can wake up and you can start again, that's not failure. That's a stepping stone in the right direction to where God wants you. And I'm speaking to you today about a brand new day, a fresh start and a whole new beginning. This pandemic has brought a whole lot of junk with it. Evil junk. Demonic junk that has entered into the homes of God's children. Sometimes God doesn't change your situation. And many people think, God, why are you not changing my situation? Why? It's because God is trying to change your heart. If you're rebellious and you fight Him in your season, and you say, change my season, He's not changing it because He wants to change your heart first. When he's got your heart, he's got everything. He's not interested in your own agenda and being all okay and everything fixed up and you're on the road to recovery. He's interested in your heart. And a fresh start has got to do with a sincere and a choice decision in life. That things have got to change and things have got to start according to what God says. I love the story about David. And David when he was chosen to be who he was intended to be. They found him in the field busy tending to the sheep. And so you know the story about how they needed to replace King Saul because of his disobedience. And Jesse brings his eldest son thinking that's how it's going to be. Now don't go and get confused and start thinking eldest now no, youngest yes, no. God changes things according to the heart of the person. But this story is a story in the Bible that God wants to make a point. It's not who you think it should be. It's who I think it should be. God always chooses the one that the world does not see. And many of you watching online 
And you are saying, but who's seeing me? God is taking you through a character test. Before you have a fresh start, you need to have a character start. A refining on the inside so that you can be, in, be enabled to do what God wants you to do. And you fight God. Why is it everyone acknowledging and seeing me? But then when you go through the character test, you learn that it's not about you. It's about the one who made you. And his name is Jesus Christ. David hid in the cave. For so long he hid in the cave. He hid in that cave and many of you are hiding in your cave. And you do not want to take the step of faith to do what God wants you to do. Because you are worried about the labels of people. Why are you worried about the labels of people? When you should be worried about what God says about you. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says, Do not look at, on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. Many of you are looking at the appearance of things around you and the appearance of who you are in society. And God is not interested in your status and in your appearance and in your height, no matter what you may try to make people believe. But God is interested in something more important than your appearance, more important than your status, more important than your height in this community. God is interested for the Lord sees, not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And I understand this word because God has tested me in this word. And I know that what's on the inside is more important than what's on the outside. Don't Chase what's on the outside when you want to have a fresh start. If your motive is wrong, then your motive is going to take you short-lived. But if your motive is clean, because God can work with a clean heart, a pure hands and a clean heart. And he's going to take you where he wants you to go. Every one of us must do what I call the self-test. And nobody can say that I cannot do it because you all got mirrors in your home. Lock the door and put a chair in front of that mirror and look into that mirror. And be honest with what you see. You cannot have a fresh start until you first account for who you are, what you see, and are you prepared to change what you see. Because self is one of the biggest obstacles of having a fresh start in life. Everyone is about self. Woe be to us who does not see that it's about him and not about us. Test yourself, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 13. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves or you do not recognize this about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test. And the Holy Spirit will tell you when you're looking into that mirror, by the way, if you are who you say you are. Because you cannot lie to you. Don't even try to give yourself a pep talk or a motivational talk. It won't work when you're alone in that room in front of the mirror and the Holy Spirit is working in you. Examine yourselves. Test ourselves. The Bible, when you go on to read in the book of 2 Corinthians, don't do anything wrong. Do what is right. If you want to have a fresh start, stop bad 
behavior. Hmm. I don't know. Am I cross again? Portia reckons I'm cross when I preach. Over this past couple of weeks, it came across like that. I don't know if the Holy Spirit is cross. Do you all think I'm cross when I preach? Some words have got to be spoken. Because the devil is not going to make things easy. If he wants to, he's going to kill you. Sometimes you've got to take the stick out. You can't just have good talk all the time. But I know what Portia is saying. She says, hey, you're scaring the people sometimes. I'm speaking my heart today, dear friends. You want to have a fresh start? Get your act together. Easy come, easy go. Ask people who made it in life. Hard work, don't kill. Don't give me the smart work talk. You can only work smart unless you know how to work hard. Then you value the smartness in what you do. Otherwise, you'll never value it. You'll fail the test because your character is not refined. To have a fresh start means to start living for God and serving through your gift. Imagine that. Imagine that. To have a fresh start means to start living for God. Look at what 1 Peter 4 says. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude. Because whoever suffers in body is done with sin. You know what that means? When we're in sin, it gratifies the flesh. But when we want to deal with that and abstain from that, we suffer for Christ. And our body is done with sin. When your body is done with sin, you're in a stronger place. And as a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. A fresh start means a change of behavior and a fresh thinking. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans do and what they choose to do. And there's a whole list of what the Bible says. But verse 4, they are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless while living and they heap abuse on you. Get ready for heaped abuse when you make a fresh start. Get ready when you choose to stop doing what the world does and change your behavior. Get ready for people to call you names and to abuse you. To say you are like this, you are like that. You do not die because they want to pull you back. So you've got to get ready. Verse 7 says, the end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. And above all, love each other deeply. It's interesting that the Bible always brings us back to love. If you want to have a fresh start, if you don't have love, who is God? That fresh start will mean nothing. It will just be a quick two second start. One month's time, you're back to square one. Because love covers a multitude of sin. Many people who want to have a fresh start haven't even forgiven themselves because of the failure. And I'm speaking to you today and I'm saying, dear friend, God has forgiven you. Why haven't you forgiven yourself? His mercies, they are new every morning, new every morning. There's a reason, because God knows we are weak. That is why His mercies are new every morning. When you give mercy, you get mercy. God will forgive you. But you waste valuable time if you stay in that failure. You're wasting valuable time. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. You want to have a fresh start? What's the reason for that fresh start? And when you start to move in the direction God is taking you, be hospitable to people. You know, I can come and talk to you and give you a 10-point thesis on how you can go and grow in the corporate world. But unless you know the basics, 
that 10 point thesis is going to worth nothing to you mean nothing to you hospitality simple things will grow you so that in the marketplace you can grow and don't grumble to be hospitable when people come to your house don't grumble when you have something that you need to prepare and take somewhere don't grumble do it with a good spirit for God watches don't be a grumbler be hospitable each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others I can tell you in the church there are so many gifts I can see those gifts starting to come to the fore we were seven months in normality when we opened from August 2019 then we came to March and it was locked down then 17 months we were in lockdown two years birthday we celebrated last month in August in that two years I've seen even in lockdown how the giftings of God's people in the church had risen and come to where God wants it to be I'm talking to you about a fresh start it means you got to stop doing what never worked for you if it never worked it never worked all your life chances are it's never going to work stop wasting time and stop even behavior or even poor character that went went against God's ways you got to change your ways start loving be hospitable. I said don't grumble. Use your gift to serve others and make sure that in all you do in your fresh start that you glorify God. I've seen people, they say to God be the glory. God is not fooled. He knows if you're really giving him the glory. And everyone is tested including this person speaking to you today. Everyone is tested. Do we really give him the glory? Be careful of people that bring up your past. You're making a fresh start. I'm giving you a heads up today. You want a good heads up? Be careful of people that are going to bring up your past. And they're going to do that. They're going to bring up your past. And I'll explain to you. I've written a few notes. Let me explain. People that are insecure and threatened can't handle your stand with God. You're making a turn for God. How can people get so jealous when someone gives their heart to God and starts moving on in life? How come that is? I'm not talking about people who don't know Jesus Christ. I'm talking about people who attend church every Sunday. We need to change our ways. aren't able to accept what God is doing in your life and then they start to talk about your past. They remind you to bind you. You like that Portia? I wrote that down a few days ago. They remind you to bind you. Be careful when people remind you of your past because they want to bind you. You heard of Jezebel. You heard of that spirit of control. Break that spirit if it ever enters your household or your business or your life. They say, hey, don't forget your sin. Don't forget your mistake. In other words, they threaten you so you don't do what they want you to do. And most time it relates to you doing better than them because becoming more faithful to God, getting your act together or just doing well makes you a better person. But they don't want you to be better. So get ready, you're getting a fresh start. Be careful of those people that are going to bring up your past to pull you back. And they are going to be the people that attend church on Sunday in case you did not know run from them disconnect from them you don't need their negativity their jealousy their envy or anything else run 
fast from them. Mm. And please, if any of you have ever done that, repent. Don't ever push a person down when they're doing something for God. But encourage them and build them, for God will hold you accountable. Don't only think God is working with you. God loves every one of us equally. Every one of us He loves. There's no blue-eyed boys in Witcher with God, by the way. There's no favorites. We are all one in Christ. Because if they were favorites, that means God is not God. He's not fair. He's not true to his word. And God will never have favorites. Yes, we're a peculiar nation, a holy people, when we come before him. But God loves your neighbor. Also, that does not know him. So run from those people who bring up your past. You see, when you accept the fact that sometimes your seasons in your journey are going to be dry, and at times it's also going to be hard, and that God is also in control of both, you will also discover that there is a sense of divine peace and refuge because the hope then is in God and not in yourself. So when you're on this journey and you discover that you're in a place where things are dry and not taking place the way you like it to, and things are not going according to plan, faith says, God, I know that you're in control. I know that whatever is happening is part of a bigger plan. So God, what are you teaching me? Not change them, God, change them. No, change me, God, so that you can use me for your glory. Now, every one of us have got to ask this question, and we're going to close in just a few minutes. What's changing in me if we're going to have a fresh start? What's changing in me? My friends, my attitude, my behavior, my talk, my worship, my commitment to God, my discipline, my focus. What's changing in me? You can't say you're going to have a fresh start and have the same old bad behavior. And once I have started, guess what? Then I know that I'm on my way. Some of you need to advertise your past. Let me explain why. Your past is your testimony of what God has done in you. Don't be shy to talk about where God has brought you out of. Shame the devil and advertise the goodness of God. Many of you have such powerful testimonies, but you're scared to say you went and you did something wrong in your life. When God wants to use that for His glory, and you know what's holding you back from that? is pride. But when you deal with that pride, God can do greater things through you. Don't get stuck there, because a fresh start means changing our ways. People who used to be alcoholics or drug addicts or gamblers or sinners, whatever the case may be. The things I used to do, the things I love to do, I now hate them when I have a fresh start. I'm not going to get angry about petty issues anymore. My focus is going to be on God and not on this world. And my aim, by the way, when I have a fresh start, my aim is to please God. You see, the devil doesn't care if you go to church or read your Bible as long as you don't apply it to your life. So go to church, read your Bible. He's okay. But when you apply it to your life, he is scared as hell. So what am I saying to you? To have a fresh start, we need to apply. James 1.22 But be he doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. For if anyone be a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and saith, Forget it what manner of man he was. That's why I said, Go into the room, look into the mirror, and the Holy Spirit will lead you. The new me versus the, the old me, the fake me. The old me was cold 
the new me is going to be hot. The old me used to compromise. The new me, no compromise. That can go deep. The new me had lots of fear. The, the old me had lots of fear. The new me is going to be full of faith. Let's stand. The old me was a man pleaser and the new me is going to be a God pleaser. The old me was unholy and the new me is going to be holy. And the old me was unrighteous and the new me is going to be righteous. I read for you today a blessing. Every one of you today I want you to get ready for this blessing. For as we step out into this whole new season. Portia, I want you to come and stand with me as I read this blessing over the church. Every one of you that's online today. Every one of you here in the building. Close your eyes and bow your heads. Hmm. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. For the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And they will be called oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. And they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. And they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. And here's your blessing today, verse number 7. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of your disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so will you inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. For I the Lord love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring above among the people. And all who see them will acknowledge and they are a people and the, the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord and my soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. God is going to restore you. He's going to resurrect you and He's going to rename you. People may call you names. But God is going to rename you. And don't worry if they call you names because they're adding to your story. Your story is going to shut the mouth of the lion one day. Get ready! Your story is going to shut the mouth of the lion. God's going to restore you. He's going to resurrect you. He's going to rename you. A fresh start has begun today in Jesus' name. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed as we worship God. And Jeffrey Nidy will come and close in prayer. 
I will see you on Tuesday night. If you want to be in the building, register now, for we can only take a certain number. Get ready for restoration, resurrection, and a renaming. Gracious God, Father, we want to thank you this morning for such an awesome presence. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings that have come and showered us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for having favor on this house this morning because this is your house. We thank you, Lord, that this is a house of miracles. And this morning, God, we thank you for your blessings, Lord. We thank you, Lord, even for your servant that ministered your word. I pray, Lord, that you continue to bless him and use him and even for your children this morning. Many of us require a fresh start, Lord, this morning. Many of us require an intervention from you, Lord, this morning. We pray that the Holy Ghost and fire will just come into our bones. Your Holy Ghost and fire will fill our hearts, Lord. And Father, for those of us that feel that we are not even worth it, Lord, we know that you died on that cross so we could be resurrected this morning. And I pray, Lord, many of us in our hearts this morning need a restart. We ask you, God, to mold us, chip us, shape us according to your plan and purpose. We thank you, Lord, for the million little miracles that we, you perform in our lives daily. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to bless us, Lord. Even for many of us that require this fresh start, we know there's a miracle behind our fresh start this morning. And we ask you, God, to bless this house. Bless your children, Father. Even for the week that's ahead of us, Lord, this day. We know that your children will come through many obstacles, challenges. We know the enemy will try to rob them, but we pray that this word, Lord, will abide in their hearts, Father, they'll do what you ask them to do this morning, that they'll have the victory, they'll have the favor, they'll have the miracles, Lord, this morning. And together as a church, Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise because you are worthy of all our praises this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with much thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.